Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at an introduction to impulse response of a linear system. Specifically, we will look at an example illustrating how to use the impulse response in computing the output of a linear system. So, the output of a linear system is defined as follows. Output of a linear system y of n is equal to the sum k equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x of k multiplied by h k of n. So, this is the output of the system, this is the input and this is the impulse response. So, when you have a linear system with the impulse response h k of n for a given input x of n, the corresponding output is given by y of n and the mathematical representation of this output is given by this formula equation 1, where y of n is basically equal to the sum of the products of the input x of n with the impulse response h k of n. So, here h k of n is the impulse response which is basically defined as when you give an input that is delta of n minus k which is basically a displaced or shifted version of the unit sample or unit impulse to a system then the output is the same as the h k of n. So, therefore, when the input is unit impulse the output is the impulse response h k of n. So, now let us look at an example illustrating how to use the impulse response to compute the output of the linear system. So, given the following input x of n which has only three non-zero values that is at value equal to minus 1, n equal to minus 1, n equal to 0 and n equal to 1. So, uh, it has only three values 1 at minus 1 and 0 and 1. So, this is x of n and now we have three possible structures for h k of n. For h minus 1 of n, we have the following structure. That is, the sequence is defined as follows. So, this is the structure of h of h minus 1 of n, where this is the origin 0 and this is minus 1, plus 1 and 2. And for h of 0 of n, we have the following structure or the following sequence. So, this is 0, this is minus 1, 1, 2 and 3. So, this is axis n and also we have h1 of n which is given as a non-zero value at minus 1, 0 at 0 and a negative value at 1 and 2, negative values at 1 and 2. So, this is h1 of n. Note that the value of the impulse response basically changes for different values of k and since y of n and since y of n is defined by this sum we know that x of n has non-zero values only for three values of n so clearly so clearly y of n can be rewritten as x of minus 1 multiplied by h minus 1 of n plus x of 0 multiplied by h 0 of n plus x of 1 multiplied by h 1 of n. So, and since we know the impulse response for each value of k that is for h minus 1 of n, h 0 of n and h 1 of n, we can basically construct these three structures or these three sequences as follows. So, for the first term we have x minus 1 multiplied by delta of n plus 1 which is basically the value of x of minus 1 which is here. So, this is x of minus 1, x of minus 1 multiplied by delta of n plus 1 and then the product with the product of this value with h minus 1 of n is given by basically this is a negative value. So, this, this function h minus 1 of n, this signal h minus 1 of n will be multiplied by this weight, negative weight. So, it should look like the following. So, this is x minus 1 multiplied by h minus 1 of n. 
Similarly, x of 0 multiplied by delta of n is given by the value of x of n at n equal to 0. So, which is clearly in a non-negative, a positive value at 0. And when you multiply this with h 0 of n, basically this will be amplified. This is x of 0 multiplied by h0 of n. So, this is x of 0 multiplied by h0 of n. And finally, we have the value x of 1 multiplied by delta of n minus 1. So, this is the signals for x of 1 multiplied by delta of n minus 1. And then when you multiply this x of 1 with h1 of n, we have again a weighted version of this signal structure or this impulse response structure. So, this is x of 1 multiplied by h1 of n. Now, the actual output y of n is basically a sum of these three separate outputs by using this result. Therefore, for the input x of n, the corresponding output for the input x of n, the corresponding output is given by the sum of these three values or these three sequences, which is basically equal to the following. So, this is n and this is 0 and this output is the y of n, the final output y of n. So, for a linear system, once the impulse responses at different values of k are known, we can easily calculate the output y of n by, cal by first evaluating the value x k multiplied by h k of n and then adding up all the values for different values of k. When the, In the special case, when the system is also time invariant, that is, system is linear and time invariant, then the impulse response h k of n can be written as h of n minus k. That is, the impulse response at any value of k can be determined as a shifted version of the original h0 of n. So, if you want to find h1 of n, it is basically equal to h0 of n minus 1. You basically shift the values of h0 of n by value of 1. Thus, the output of a linear time invariant system can be written as y of n is equal to the sum k equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x of k multiplied by h of n minus k. And this sum is also known as convolution or convolution sum. And this is valid only for linear time invariant systems. Thanks for watching.